and it's something that our country is proud of. They, they're proud that our founding fathers, you know, referenced theological textbooks and academic and philosophical textbooks of all of all backgrounds, of all times of history, and and um, it's this is all rooted in this very intentional fear that individuals, groups, politicians have instilled in a certain segment of our country's society, you know, that Islam and the West are mutually exclusive, that there is something inherently violent about the Muslim faith. And, and as someone who was raised in a diverse faith background and as someone that has studied the Quran, I, I encourage anyone to read the Quran. And I think what most people will see if they, if they read it with an open mind is that the Quran actually has a phenomenally just war theory, you know, phenomenally advanced just war theory. It, it's a peace what's, loving. What's just war? Um, Self defense, I would argue. You know, for example, and and um, when do you when when are you allowed to engage in in warfare? When are you not allowed to engage in warfare? I think that you know, studying Prophet Muhammad and and studying the history upon you know the context of what was Arabia when Islam and, and Prophet Muhammad were were. Um, when Prophet Muhammad received, you know, what Muslims believe to be the message from God, which is the Quran, and just, I think most people are hearing these talking points from people that have very intentional agendas to divide our communities, to instill fear in people, and I think it's very misguided and unfortunate. You brought up Thomas Jefferson's Quran. Is this the same uh, book that uh, that Keith Ellison, the first Muslim member of Congress, was sworn into office using that yes, that Quran? Yes, he did use that Quran. We're speaking with Layla Abdelaziz. She is government legislative and government affairs director at Care Florida. That's like saying lobbyist, right? I, I think once I used the word lobbyist. I like the word advocate. <laughs> but but you go to but Tallahassee. yeah, so I do go to Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. You know, I monitor legislation. I. Um, try to engage legislators with with you know facts and and stories and and push back on things that I think intrude on American civil rights and civil liberties and promote legislation that protects civil rights and civil liberties. If you'd like to join the conversation, the number is eight one three two three nine nine six six three. You can email your question or comment to dj at wmnf dot org. And I I want to play a little um, a little quote here from. Uh, uh, as I said earlier, I'm legally mandated to play Donald Trump here. Um, uh, so you were talking about the climate that this type of this type of um, this bill, the the thing you heard in the elevator, it's just creating a climate. And so it's hard to not notice this climate in this election year. And part of it is because of the leading Republican candidate, Donald Trump. And for example, this is one of the things he has said to maybe, in, in my mind, contribute to this climate of, of distrust of, among groups. Calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims I almost, entering the United States. I almost hated States to play this, but I think people will respond. Can figure out what the hell I still haven't talked on. about the um, um, the H the S. SB 86, then your letter, I'll talk about your letter. Okay. We have no choice. <clears throat> Mr. Trump stated, without looking at the various polling data, it's obvious to anybody the hatred <laughs> now is beyond got a comprehension. <laughs> Such a big portion. Here, I'm going to tweet, I'm going to tweet that we're on the air, okay? Thank you. 
When we see violations, we have to report those violations and quickly. You don't worry about profiling. Ten seconds. I yeah. promise I will defend you from profiling. I promise. Well, that's Donald Trump speaking late last year. So we have to look at mosques and don't worry about profiling. I don't know um, if there's anything else. It seems like Mr. Trump is contradicting himself, and um, it's very unfortunate. You know, it's very unfortunate that the leading presidential candidate of the Republican Party is someone that is openly and proudly and firmly saying that he wants to ban a faith group from entering the United States, that he doesn't want to condemn the KKK, that he doesn't want to, you know, it's, it's, he is um, manipulating a certain segment of society, I think, that has been driven and, and moved by fear for several years from the Republican Party. And we've seen that in Florida, we've seen that in our communities here, and, and I think it's a very dangerous direction, but it's a direct, it's, it's something that we have to tackle head on. It's something that business leaders, community leaders, academics, faith leaders need to make a firm and resounding call that Donald Trump is an American and Donald Trump does not represent the values and principles of Americans. 813-239-9663. We're going to go to, to Douglas in Clearwater. Hi, Douglas. Thank you, Douglas. I appreciate it. Thank you for that call, Douglas. Have you? I, all right. Thank you, Douglas, for that call. Have you gotten an apology from anyone in the elevator? No. Representative Goodson did release a statement, but I don't consider his statement an apology. So I have to admit I don't know about this statement. Can you fill me in? What, what happened in the statement? Um, Representative Goodson basically said that I was trying to make a joke and I regret that Layla took it the wrong way. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, oh, it's, it's that victim blaming of like, you know, I, I'm, I'm not trying to be a victim. Like, I have thick skin. I'm totally fine. But for him to say that, you know, that he was trying to make a joke and I didn't take it the wrong way and he regrets that I didn't take it the wrong way and then somewhere in the end he um, called out the political correctness police and somewhere in the end he also said rather than um, people calling my office because of what I said we should all be angry at the terrorists. So that, that was the statement. <laughs> Not verbatim, of course, but it's, it's out there in the public. And, you know, two other representatives, one representative um, commented on Representative Goodson's, uh, you know, statement on the, on the incident and said, knowing her, I'm not surprised. And another one was like, you know, it was like this call of solidarity, like I stand with you, Representative Goodson. And I think it's very frustrating because I thought that, and, you know, I think also um, I, I get comments like this often in Tallahassee. It's, it's not something that was new or shocking to me, but this particular incident happened in public and other people bore witness to it, and it was something that I could prove that happened, unfortunately. Like, you have to be able to prove that. And, and I get it. I get that you have to be able to prove it, but it's just um, instead of us having a 
constructive conversation about why do you feel that way and why did you think that it's funny to make a joke at someone's expense we are again just going back to dividing and, and escalating this problem rather than constructively addressing it huh. right, well, let's go back to the phones we have Laura in Tampa hi Laura hi Laura You know, it's absolutely fear mongering. That you know, it's it's nothing else. And we have the fear mongering. It, you know, fear is a very easy emotion to manipulate. And I think that politicians or people with agendas know this and and use this very intentionally because it's very easy to mobilize people on on the emotions of fear and paranoia and. And on, on top of that, you know, we also exist in a state that has passed various levels of voter restriction laws, and um, we have very gerrymandered communities, and, and the courts have kind of proven that to us in the past year, that we do have gerrymandered districts, and they're not fairly representative of the communities throughout the state of Florida. So I hope that, you know, elections will start to balance out the powers of, of Tallahassee, and we'll get elected officials that are focused on building consensus in their communities, elected officials that are focused on healing wounds in communities instead of manipulating wounds and leading us to, to the future rather than passing regressive laws. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate you calling. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't feel nice. It doesn't feel nice. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Laura, thank, th you, Laura. thank you so much for your call. I have a comment from Ron in Tampa who is uh, texting in. My compliments to your guest. He says, Trump is using fear tactics and using the specter of 9-11 to arouse in people this anger and suspicion. A lot of people are gullible and angry at this boogeyman, and Trump is capitalizing at this. So that kind of reinforces what we just heard. And then uh, Andrew Green writes, too bad your guest didn't tell the representative that he should indeed wait for the next elevator since he obviously let his unfounded fears rule his life. Perhaps the childish little boy should take the stairs in case the cable might break and crash down. So, so those are a couple of the comments we've gotten so far from email. Do you want to respond to any of them? Um, I appreciate the support. Thank you. All right, let's go to Aaron in Sarasota. Hi, Aaron. Hi, 